Here it is, the final video of the series. But we're not going to just phone it in. There are some really good tips and tricks here, so let's get right into it. Why not start with our old favourites, ping and traceroute. When we issue a ping, it gives a Linux style of output, and it will run until we stop it. If you prefer the Cisco look, add the rapid keyword, which sends five quick pings. If we want ping to ignore the routing table and use a particular interface, we can add the bypass routing keyword. But here's the really awesome one. Try using traceroute monitor sometime. This will continually monitor the path to the destination, making it very useful to track packet loss or high latency along a path. If you press the D key, you can toggle different views. Junos is heavily based in FreeBSD and Linux, and so are the methods of logging. If you've used Linux, you'll know about the logs in slash var slash log, and in particular the messages log. The same exists in Junos. We can see the contents of any log using the show log command. To see the most recent entries, pipe this through the last command. The boot process is also logged, which we can see with show system boot messages. Taking this a step further, we can use the monitor command. This monitors files in real time and displays new additions to the screen. That makes it a bit like using the terminal monitor command in iOS, or more accurately, like using tail-f in Linux. We'll use this a bit in the final lab. Right now, I'm removing a cable from an interface. This event is logged to the messages file and monitor displays it on the screen immediately. If you're getting flooded by messages, you can press escape Q to pause the output. If you've been working at it for a while and you can't remember what you're monitoring, use the monitor list command. And when you're done, use monitor stop to clean up after yourself. And let's not forget exporting logs to an external syslog server. All logging settings, whether local or remote, are under system syslog hierarchy. You can see, for example, that messages and interactive commands are here by default. Adding an external server is as simple as setting a host IP, the facility, and the logging level. We can also use settings here to send messages to the console port. I would only recommend doing this during troubleshooting though. If you take a look at the study notes that go along with this video, you can see how we can even redirect logs to another user's terminal session. If you need it, you can use the help syslog command. This will give you extra information on log messages and what they mean. Let's not forget our interfaces though. We can monitor them too using the monitor interface command. This shows us real time statistics, which is useful to see if the interface is being overused or if packets are being dropped. An alternative is monitor interface traffic, which is a real time summary of all interfaces. By default, this shows us a packet counter. Press B to switch to bandwidth. If you want more, you have monitor traffic interface, which is easily confused with the last command. This is the same as TCP dump in Linux and captures exception traffic. This cannot be used to capture transit traffic. If this is giving you too much, add the write file command to write to disk instead of displaying the results on screen. You can use monitor traffic read file to check the results when you're done. Next are trace options, which are very cool. They are basically the same thing as debugs in iOS, except the output is written to disk rather than displayed on screen. I think this makes them perform better. Each feature in config can have trace options enabled. In this example, we're enabling trace options under interfaces. First, we set the file that it writes to. This is assumed to be in slash var slash log. If we wanted, we could even get Junos to send trace options output to a syslog server. Then we set one or more flags. Flags are the events that we want to trace. The flags will be different for each feature. That is, the flags we use under interfaces will be different to the flags that we set under system. To keep it simple, we'll just enable them all. We can see the logs we've collected with the show log command. What if you want to monitor these in real time? Easy, just monitor the file like we did earlier. To make it even better, we can pipe the monitor command through match to filter the real time output. 
Eventually, the log file will reach a maximum size and it will rotate. That means that a new file is started and the old file will be compressed. File size and the number of files to keep are all configurable. Of course, you can easily find the most recent logs by piping through the last command. There are a lot of system commands that we can use when troubleshooting. I'm not even going to explain them all as there are far too many and it would bore us both to death. However, here are a selection of chassis commands which will get you information about your device hardware. That includes things like temperature, serial numbers, clusters, alarms, and things like this. By the way, these will all be in the study notes for quick reference. Here we have system commands which relate to Junos itself. This includes processes, logging, alarms, disk usage, uptime, and more. And finally, a few request commands. These are used to perform system level tasks, including reboots, rescue config management, upgrades, formatting storage, and things of that nature. You might be wondering though, what's the difference between halt and power off? This seems to depend on the platform. As far as I can tell, they're the same thing on EX series switches. On the SRX platform though, Halt will shut down all processes, but leave the box powered up. This enables you to boot it back up from the CLI when you're ready. Power off, on the other hand, completely shuts the system down and powers off the chassis. To finish off the series, let's talk about the next step you need to take if you need technical support for your Juniper switch, router, or firewall. As with any vendor, you can log a support ticket for assistance. Juniper's tech support team is called JTAC or Juniper Technical Assistance Center. After a ticket is logged, you will need to collect some information about your device. It will save time if you do this before they ask you, so I'm gonna show you how this is done. The first command you need to run is request support information. This script will take a while to run and it will generate lots of data. It's basically a lot of show commands with the output saved into the slash var slash log directory. Once that's done, we want to archive everything in the log directory with the file archive command. I usually put them in the var temp directory. That collects everything we just generated as well as any additional logs we have and compresses them into an archive file. Once that's done, you can see the support.tgz file in this directory. You just need to collect this file, perhaps with SCP or FTP, however you want, and attach it to the JTAC ticket. This process will save you a lot of time. We have made it to the final quiz of this series. I hope these quizzes have provided some value for you. Remember that you can review these concepts with flashcards that are available from the members area of the website. And that's it. You've made it all the way through the introduction to Juniper series. And I have to say, it was pretty long for an introduction series. So what's next for you? Perhaps the exam? Or maybe you're going to get a job working on Juniper routers and switches? Let me know in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. Oh, and if you like this series, please subscribe. You'll be the first to see whatever's coming next on this channel.